today. This is Benita Richter, and it is fantastic that you are here in support of this three free webinar, Create Powerful, Meaningful, Sincere Marketing Stories That Set You Apart from the Competition, How to Talk About Why You Are Different, Why People Should Care, to Quickly Open Up the Flow of New Clients with Your Marketing Stories. I'd like to take a couple of moments administratively. As usual, I'm going to give you an action step or two to take so get a pen and paper if you don't already have one. My intention is you leave this webinar with something of real value so you can start forward movement toward creating your marketing stories that will differentiate your uniqueness and you will stand out from your competitors in what is a very crowded marketplace for many of us present here today. I have this webinar muted so we have a clean and enjoyable listening experience. If you have any questions during the presentation, post them in the chat section on the left of your screen. Many of you here today already know me. For those of you who are new to me, here's just a little bit about me and why I can help you. I'm a small business consultant and coach. My mission is to help entrepreneurs increase their reach, revenue, and profits and grow a business that financially empowers them. I can help you because I have over 30 years experience in business management and entrepreneurship. I helped my family grow a multi-million dollar company and what comes with that is a lot of challenges, a lot of experience successfully navigated through. So. I've pretty much seen, heard, uh, and have been exposed to everything in business as far as challenges, um, as well as the joy, so definitely can put my experience to work for you. I do have a business education. I, my undergraduate is in business, and I do have an executive MBA. My focus in helping my clients is small business development and strategy consulting, marketing, branding, and sales, <clears throat> excuse me, strategy consulting, and financial management consulting. Your story matters. Human to human connections are truly the heart and soul of business. At the end of the day, you're dealing with people. Your company is solving problems, alleviating pain points, and providing delightful customer experiences. Revenue is something that happens <clears throat> Excuse me. Revenue is something that happens as a byproduct of a sound business model and a positive customer experience. Storytelling is a powerful technique for building relationships. It's an age old concept that brings people together and keeps them engaged. It doesn't matter where in the world you're based. Storytelling has gl uh, broad, global, and universal appeal. <clears throat> Good stories give big voices to small ventures. That's why it's mission critical that companies take the time up front to fully develop their approaches to storytelling. Storytelling and marketing go hand in hand. Just think about it. Whether you're writing copy for a promotional email, writing copy for a Facebook ad, or writing a free online guide, you need to capture your audience's attention. On a daily basis, consumers, yourself included, face advertising overload. Marketers are constantly competing for their prospects' attention. More likely than not, your brand will be buried under spammy advertising messages. So how can you make your brand stand out? through marketing and business storytelling. Your brand strategy should prioritize storytelling. Storytelling is a powerful and very actionable marketing technique. What you will learn today is three types of marketing stories you need to have in your hip pocket when talking about your business, how to determine if you have a branding issue that's preventing you from making more sales, how to stand out from your competitors and identify the unique ingredients that make you unique, your marketing stories, how to figure out the why about your business so you inspire others to want to work with you, your USP and ESP, emotional and logical benefits your clients get by working with you so you stir up more sales. The USP is the unique selling proposition, ESP is emotional selling proposition. 
I also have a pilot program which I am launching, Bird of a Different Feather, Create Your Marketing Stories webinar learning series. And this program is all about how to create powerful, meaningful, sincere marketing stories that set you apart from the competition. This is a three session pilot program. If you're interested in being part of it, email us at benita at benitarichter.com. You can also call us at 847 989-0513 to get on the priority notification list. This program, this pilot program is limited up to 10 people. I am offering it at half price, $97 instead of the usual regular price which I plan on launching it of $197. So if you are interested please email because it will be first come first served and the bonus is you will get 30 days in the Virtual Business Salon Mastermind which is where you can get coaching and refine your marketing message, get feedback about that as well as get some accountability about getting the work done which is very very important why invest in a program if you will not get the work done. So that's where the virtual business salon comes into play. It will help support you in completing your marketing stories. So this is an overview of the three different sections that we will talk about today. Number one, why your brand needs marketing stories. Number two, have you got a branding issue? I have a quick analysis to help you figure that out. And number three, three key ingredients to create standout marketing stories. Why your brand needs marketing stories. Here's a quick definition of what a marketing story is. Distinct message content that uses well-crafted narratives to communicate and connect with a desired audience to share messages in ways that engage audiences to drive them to take a desired action. Marketing stories are also knows, known as business stories and they are the message component of your brand strategy. Business stories differ from regular stories in that you tell them with an objective, goal, or desired outcome in mind rather than being told for engagement. When you tell a story well, it can create an intense personal connection between your audience and your message. Effective stories can change our opinions, they can inspire us to achieve goals that we didn't think were possible, and they can show us how we can change things for the better. Here are some benefits and uses of marketing stories. They help increase the know, like, and trust factor because people relate well and engage with stories. Increase the conversion sales rate. Get more clients from your sales conversations. It can also decrease and shorten the sales cycle. Instead of it taking 60, 90 days, six months to gain a new client, you can significantly decrease that time with stories and engagement. Increase the win rate in getting new clients. Increases customer engagement, listening, loyalty, and profits. The bottom line is it helps your brand become more memorable and likable. Some ways that you can use your marketing stories are on your website, in your about page, social media, email marketing, you're infusing part of your stories and your messages, your presentations, whether you're doing a PowerPoint or you're speaking somewhere, interviews, proposals that you're writing, events that you're attending or leading, seminars, trade shows, training employees, referrals, working with your referral partners, peer-to-peer -peer communications, basically anywhere where you are writing or speaking about your business, there's an opportunity to communicate your marketing stories. More and more businesses are recognizing that storytelling in marketing, branding, and sales enhances customer engagement and listening. It, it definitely increases customer loyalty and profits. Why? Because stories relate experiences. When you tell a story about your business, you invite others to relive the experience with you. This creates memorable experiences. And if a potential customer remembers you, they're more likely to buy from you. Here are three types of marketing stories, which I'll call um, really uh, are the foundation of the, the 
of all your marketing stories and marketing communications that you create in your business. And they are foundational origin stories or your hero's journey, what you stand for, and what you do. From these three story types, you can create your about page on your website, your biography for speaking, you can communicate your mission and your vision and your big why you do what you do. It can help you create your sales pages, emails, sales letters, and even your 30 second introduction when someone asks you, what do you do? So no more cheesy sounding 30 second speeches that sound canned and corny. Yours will stand out, be noticed, and be unique when it's derived from your foundational work in creating your marketing stories, which is an integral piece, a critical piece of your brand strategy. So how do you choose a piece of chocolate? My personal favorite is chocolate with a caramel filling or caramel turtles. I don't like the jellies and the creams. The point I want to show here is, <clears throat> excuse me, is we all have a favorite. We all have a favorite piece of chocolate. We all have a way of choosing the things we want to use and depend a lot on our past experiences when making choices. Whatever it is, whether it's a piece of chocolate, cars, or clothing, you've tried them a bunch of times and you have a preference. Here's another example. When in the car, how do you choose a radio station? Perhaps you like pop music, maybe you like talk radio, or even country music. Think about when driving through an area, you're traveling cross country and you don't know the local radio stations. How do you find one? There are a lot of radio stations out there. There's no right or wrong answer when making a choice what to listen to and what is right for you. Your brand is much like a radio signal. We're putting it out there in the world through the visual, written, and emotional messages that we're broadcasting. There's a signal that people are hearing and reacting to. They may be actually hearing you or seeing you in a way that you really are and resonate with your signal totally. Or maybe your signal is weak and it's not communicating how you really are, how you are this wonderfully talented person who can help your clients solve a big problem. But if your signal is weak or not representing you the way you really are, people aren't hearing from you, your message is not resonating with them, and they are not choosing you simply because they're not hearing your message. How are others perceiving your brand? Do you know? You do have control over your brand and marketing message and the signal that you are putting out into the world. You do this through the marketing stories, the business stories that you are telling. Make sure that what you are broadcasting is authentic and true to you. Your messaging is a critical component how you do that and is a piece of your overall brand strategy. Here's an exercise that you can do to determine how others are perceiving your brand. What you can do is ask current and past clients, potential clients, peers, people who know you and your brand, and ask them these three questions. What three words would you use to describe me? What one emotion do you feel when you think about me and my brand? What one quality do you associate most with my business and me? This will give you some insight into how others are perceiving your brand. Let's now talk about the USP and EVP, or it can, it's also called the ESP. The unique selling proposition is a specific promise you make to a specific set of people, a specific audience, and communicates the logical benefits your prospects and clients can look forward to receiving when they buy from you. Your emotional selling proposition is that sales are based mostly on emotion and the decision is backed up with logic. So we have emotion and logic both coming into play when people are making a buying decision. However, emotion trumps logic. Emotional, um, uh, Levers are the ones that help prospects make the decision to buy. Here's an exercise that you can do to help you begin to think about the feelings and emotions you want to stir up with your prospects. 
Can your product service make the prospect feel important, valued, part of a unique group of people, loved, safe, accepted, fulfilled, confident? How is it that you want people to feel when they think about your brand? You can actually control this to some degree by the marketing messages, the marketing stories and communications that you are putting out there, that you are broadcasting. So the first step really is to determine how you want your prospect to feel and then incorporate words into your stories and your copy that help bring forth those feelings that you want to that you want your clients to feel, your prospects to feel when they're thinking about working with you and investing in your products and services. So you really get the picture here about um, all the different feelings. There are of course there are more. So next time you are visiting your USP, make sure you take just as long, if not longer, on your emotional selling proposition as well, which is what this exercise is about. Critical, critical, critical in your marketing messaging. Okay, our second section, have you got a branding issue? And this is how you can find out. I have an RX checklist with a whole bunch of different topics here, which you can use to evaluate your brand. If you're viewing this webinar later, you can put this webinar on pause and take a look through these and figure out which ones are missing in your business. I'll just go through some of them. It's really important that we communicate our unique gifts, talents, passions, knowledge, experience, because no one else has this. And unless we communicate this, our potential clients won't really know how we're unique. Also, you might have a branding issue if you're unclear about your why, why you are in business, what drives you to be in business, why did you start your business in the first place, what problems do you see in the marketplace that aren't being solved. It also could be that you don't know your unique selling proposition or your emotional selling proposition or you're having trouble picking a niche. At some point, you need to pick a niche to tailor your marketing messages so that they resonate with a particular type of person. Also, not having a deep understanding of your customers' needs, pains, emotional drivers, and motivators that um, they're seeking to alleviate. Also, um, let's take a look here. Helter Skelter messaging. This is really big, and the reason this exists is because there is no message strategy in the business. A person has not gone through the different exercises to determine how they're unique and what their big why is and what their unique selling proposition and emotional selling propositions are. Once you know what those are, you will have consistency in your marketing messages, which builds confidence in your potential client because they're hearing the same thing over and over and it also helps to help them remember you better because your messages are staying the same and consistent. Products could be inferior to competitors as far as range, quality, performance. And perhaps someone has not kept up with ever-changing customer needs and you do that through periodic market research surveys. So I invite you to put the webinar on pause as you work through this RX checklist and determine where your brand strategy may have some gaps. And if you only have one, two, or three, you probably have a fairly strong brand, a very strong brand. But if you, if you find that most of the boxes are left unchecked, you definitely have a brand issue and that could be part of the reason why you're not attracting enough clients or the right type of client clients into your business. Here's some dragons on your path which will prevent you from taking the time or even creating your marketing stories. Many people feel they're good at writing but they don't know how to create their marketing stories and this is completely understandable because it, it really is when you get down to it there are a lot of components and things you need to know, there is a process to writing our stories. And part of that process, of course, is going through the exercises and doing the introspective work to find out what is unique about us, our talents, our professional skills, and how we're different. We need to, to do that work. And people may not even know what 
type of things we need to address and, and need to know in order to write our marketing stories. Many people don't have the time. They're already busy in their business and their lives, and they don't have the time to do the research to find out how to create their marketing stories. So um, they go on the internet and they try to pull, to pull together a hodgepodge of articles and resources which give some information, but there's lots of gaps. So they don't have the time to figure all that out. A lot of people feel they're not really good at writing, so this prevents them from writing their stories. The good news here is you don't really need to be good at writing. You just need to have a process about how to pull out of yourself what's already inside of you, what is unique about you, and write a story. And if, if you feel you're not good at writing, this is... Um, perfect opportunity to get feedback from a coach or someone who's good at writing or a copy copywriter so they can polish up your story because at the at the end of the day only you can pull your story out of you it can be polished by someone else lacking clarity about a market niche here that shows up again really need to know at some point who you're writing your marketing messaging for and um, I'd like to ask you have you ever found out that a potential client was then working with someone else who pretty much does the same thing more or less in a general sense as you do you you do and I'm sure this has happened to most of you think about how many times has this happened and it's probably happened because customers were unclear about how you, how we could help them. We didn't communicate that very well. We didn't communicate how we're unique and different and best qualified to help them. The bottom line is letting these dragons get in your way and blocking your path. It costs a lot of lost revenues, customers, and profits in your business. So I really want to strongly encourage you to write your marketing stories and if this seems like an area where you need some help consider joining the marketing workshop the marketing story workshop in the pilot program which i will be offering for up to 10 people and i can help you and give you some accountability and get those stories written so that you can start generating the revenues and getting the clients that you you want and and that you deserve in your business Let's now talk about three key ingredients to create standout marketing stories. The first ingredient is your unique gifts, talents, and passions. And if we work together in the marketing story workshop, we'll do some investigating together so that you can unearth the particular ingredients that make you unique and that you bring to the table, the value that you bring to the table to help your clients. The second thing is your why, which is the hero story and communicates your mission, vision, and values. You'll learn about how to define and declare your why, which really is much more important than your what, which is what you do. And that um, when you put that into language, in a way, it shows you off and it's a radio signal to attract your ideal clients. That's the second key ingredient, your why. The third key ingredient is crafting your story, which includes crafting and identifying your unique selling proposition, your emotional selling proposition. This is where we put the pieces together and find that unique angle that hooks your audience and makes them want to know more about you. You'll want to learn how to deliver this message verbal, verbally, visually, and in writing. And of course, crafting your stories, that's your uh, the three stories that we talked about earlier. Your foundational story, your, your hero's journey, what you do, why you do it. So these are the three key ingredients. These ingredients tell about why your company came to be, why you started it, how you came to um, learn what you know, what's your education and experiences, mentors that you've, you've worked with, what emotionally drives you to do what you do. There has to be some passion and motivation behind that. And people want to know what that is because that gets them engaged with your why. That's all part of the why what your business stands for, which is marketing with a mission, part of the why, how your products came to be, what needs did you see in the marketplace, what, what is broken, what 
isn't working and what needs to be fixed and that's why you created the products that you you do what types of customers find value in working with you and why and also your stories are ingredients that give people a transparent view into you into the people behind the company which helps increase engagement loyalty and the trust know and like factor here's a um, little mind map that my daughter did for me and this these are the components of your brand identity and you can see there's many different things here we have the brand personality in the upper right which is your name logo tagline style character personality the message which is your vision mission values unique phrases and statements it's your stories the founding what you stand for what you do value which includes your unique value or unique selling proposition, your emotional selling propositions, uh, the emotional desires, visual aspects of your brand, logo, marketing collateral, packaging, print ads, and so on. Your body of work, which includes your signature branded, um, your branded signature system, the product selection that you offer, features and benefits, testimonials, endorsements, case studies, and social proof. Marketing, which is all the different marketing activities that you do to build your business, your marketing strategy included which bumps up to your position, uh, positioning, your com competitive positioning in the market. And um, who is your market? What is your customer profile, segments, trends affecting that market and buying practices? All these are pieces of your brand identity. In the Marketing Stories Workshop, the pilot program which I'm offering the three different parts that we will be working on is you where we will be identifying your strengths talent talents knowledge experience even your weaknesses and your quirks we will uh, determine what your value is your emotional selling proposition and your unique selling proposition and those emotional drivers and then create your stories and your message so you can see your marketing message your stories are a very integral part of your brand identity and when you create this you will have what is the most critical piece of your brand identity created in your business because let's face it the visual can all be create created it's that story that way that you will engage the message that you will use to engage with your clients which is critical and most important and driving results and success in your business. Here what I've given you is an example of a storyboard of my hero's journey. There are seven different story types and my type happens to be the quest. And um, what I like to do is just take you through my journey. And um, what this really communicates is my calling and the conflicts and challenges that I faced and then how I successfully came out of those conflicts and helps communicate the value that I offer my clients. And the whole purpose behind these stories is that it resonates with a particular type of person who will look at this and say yes I get that story that's they see themselves in this story and it resonates with them and it creates a connection between me and them so my calling is I dream of helping women entrepreneurs to start and grow successful businesses to achieve financial empowerment because I believe the world will be a better place when more money is in the hands of women it will be even a better place I think it's already good the threshold is I was mentored and learned well from my father about business leadership and life I worked with him for 23 years and the time finally came where it was time for me to take my own risk to take a risk and start my own business and mentor others much as he had mentored me and so many other people now the descent begins to happen we sell our successful business in 2002 and what happens is I no longer have a job I sell all my personal belongings and my home and I pack up and move to Chicago to start a new life and business emotionally this was unsettling I was very uncertain and I really wasn't sure if it would work out well I'm actually a small-town gal 
and moving out to the Chicago area was a really big step for me and I really wasn't sure how things would turn out and a lot of people who would hear my story can relate to that. Some of the tests and ordeals that I faced my father was proud of me for stepping out on my own, though it was scary. My emotional and financial safety net that I had under me my whole life was gone. And just to explain this a little bit further, when I went to college, I, I still lived at home. I went to Penn State at, um, and uh, I didn't have to live on campus. And I always worked for my father in my adult life, except for a brief stint working at a shoe store in a mall. So my father, my family, that business was a huge safety net for me and it was gone. However, I had to move on because we sold our business and I started my business consulting venture. But what I find is I'm unfocused on the services and I even lack some business credentials and I was new in town and intimidated. And I say I lacked business credentials because even though I had a business degree, I had an associate's degree in business at the time, and I had lots of, of practical experience, for business consulting, it's very common to have a graduate degree to have an MBA, and I lacked that. And I didn't even have a bachelor's degree, so that was, um, you know, I didn't have the credentials. I wasn't sure if I could be successful. So from there, things got harder, and I went into the abyss. I, I had my business, but I really wasn't getting that much business. I was having conversations with potential clients, and um, my conversion rate was really low. I, I did write, write some business plans at that time, but it really wasn't enough. And what I had to do was I started dipping into my savings to pay my bills. I was separated from my children in Pennsylvania. I didn't have a bachelor's degree. I, um, my confidence was really low. I did have an interview at Lake Forest Graduate School of Management to see if I could enroll in the MBA program based on my experience. This wasn't a policy that they advertised, so there was a lot of uncertainty there. And um, I left the interview humiliated and in tears. It was, it was a really tough interview and I was really ripped apart by the interviewee and I was absolutely certain that I was not going to get into the graduate program. The transformation began though when I found out that day when I got home that I was accepted into the graduate school into the MBA program. I got a part-time job to get cash flow to help pay my bills and save money and I was also awarded, awarded scholarships for achievement in the program. And my daughters moved to Chicago. So things are starting to look good. I'm starting to feel whole again. The atonement, after advising and training thousands of entrepreneurs in the job that I have, I was actually director of a small business development center at a local college. I gained clarity about who I wanted to serve and what services I wanted to offer, which was business consulting and coaching to women and men entrepreneurs. With my focus on strategy, marketing, sales, and financial management, I got my MBA, I hired a business coach, and I, I handed in my notice I left my job at the college. The return is I relaunched my business in 2012. I kept it running that whole time even while I was working. I had two, three private clients. But having gone through what I went through, I was all the wiser from my struggles faced from venturing into an uncertain future. I, I truly understand the financial and emotional stress my clients face, and I'm well equipped for my experiences to help them grow their businesses from my 30 plus years business experience and education and, and just life experiences. So a certain type of person will be able to relate to this story. They will be able to see themselves in this story and they will be attracted to working with me. And this story is unique. No one else has this story in the entire world. So you can see how this is a very powerful differentiating factor in your brand and marketing strategy. Let's now talk about how to find your big why. And your big why is basically where are you coming from? Your catalyst, what you'd like to do right now, if you can, is take a moment and um, think about what was that moment when you knew you had to open your business 
What was the catalyst? What were the drivers? What pushed you in that direction? Think about your early life as well. What experience did you have earlier in life that led you to create your business? And this could be a joyful, happy experience and memory, or it could be one that might be a little bit more painful. Think about your early life and what that experience might be. For me personally, I have a sad story that motivated me to be an achiever and be um, a driver and accomplish things that people said I could not accomplish. And um, because it's a sad story, I'm not going to go into it today, but early in my life, I was told I wasn't smart and I would never be able to do what I wanted to do because I, I didn't have enough intelligence. And I was humiliated uh, in second grade by a teacher, which I still remember very clearly to this day. And I think that was a pivotal, pivotal time in my life, an early memory where I, I wanted to, to prove my worth and not so much to everyone else, but to myself. I never do things to please others or to prove that I'm better at anything. It's more a, a personal challenge, a personal journey, and it's one of having faith and confidence and persistence and doing the work necessary to be successful and not giving up. That is what drove me, and that's part of my big why. And I know so many people out there are entrepreneurs in particular, women entrepreneurs are are told that they'll never be a success or they're hearing it from their spouse they're, that they'll never be able to make it work and their, their spouse doesn't believe in them. And part of the reason they're struggling is because they don't have the business knowledge and experience that they need. And that's why I am here because I know what it's like to be told that you can't do something, yet you know you have that drive and that ambition and the ability to be successful. You, there are just some gaps in what you know and you need some help with that. And that's part of my big why. Another is thinking about what's broken. If you had the magic to fix the entire world, your industry, what would that look like for your customers? And also the flip side of that is what is your perfect world what is the perfect world vision? If your services are no longer needed anymore, how does the world look? What will be fixed? What does that world look like for your customers? And finally, your mission. What part does your business play in bringing your perfect world vision, uh, perfect world vision to fru fruition? Why does your business exist? These are all the things that you can tap into how to find your big why, which you can see is a very powerful message, a very emotional story can be behind your big why. And I can guarantee you it is a very emotional story behind that. It's a matter of revealing what is already inside of you. And I can help you do that with the Marketing Stories Workshop in the pilot program which is Bird of a Different Feather, Create Your Marketing Stories webinar learning series. It is a three session webinar, which will run between April 28th and May 12th. So we will do one module each week. Module one is your unique talents, strengths, skills, and passion. I will take you through a series of exercises to help you reveal what those are. Module two is your big why, mission, vision, and values. We just talked a lot about that. A series of exercises you will complete to help you work through your big why and you'll have fun doing it and then in module three you'll be crafting your stories your founding and hero story what you stand for what you do and we'll also identify what your USP and ESPs are there's also an assessment to determine your primary story type which you will then use as a framework to create your founding and your hero story. There is a workbook and exercises which I keep in bite-sized pieces so that you can do them. I try to keep them to about 20 to 30 minutes so it's, it's bite-sized activities that you'll do to 
complete all the different activities in the modules. There's a Facebook form to ask questions, get feedback, gain accountability so that you get your stories written. And how we do that is through the bonus, which is 30 days in the Virtual Business Salon Mastermind, which is $147 value on its own. This is a place where you can get feedback on your stories, you can ask for coaching and get accountability to get your stories written. There will be recordings of all webinar sessions so that you can go back to them anytime you need to. If you miss the live sessions, you will be able to watch them at a later point in time. For up to 10 people, this prototype program, this pilot program will be $97 versus $197, which is actually also a very low price, but is where I will start offering this. Now to be part of the pilot program, um, the only requirement really is, aside from being one of the first 10 people who express interest, is that I do want your feedback from this program. So the, there will be an assessment at the beginning of the program to determine um, you know, to find out where you are in terms of marketing stories, your confidence, how um, you know, clear you are on how you can help and that sort of thing. And then there will also be an assessment once you complete the program so that I can see um, and measure the change, the change that occurred as a result of this program. And I would also ask if this program did help you for a testimonial. Your marketing story is your brand. I do want to celebrate your commitment to your business. I do feel your courage and confidence by your willingness to delve into this topic, and I truly honor that. I can help you create powerful, authentic, sincere marketing messages that call forth your ideal clients that resonate with your message and that unique signal that you are putting out in the world. There's nothing better than being valued by our clients for what we bring to the table and to be well compensated for our gifts. If you want to be part of a select group of people to take part in our pilot program and get personal attention to create your marketing stories and your branding stories once and for all, I am here to definitely support you. No matter what your decision, if you decide to join us in this program or do it on your own, I celebrate you and wish you success. Your marketing story is your brand and it is how people understand you and your value that you bring to the table. It is the persona, the personality of your business, and it is expressed visually and through words and emotions. And it's why people choose you. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions about being part of the pilot program, email us at benita at benitarichter.com or you can call 847-989-0513. I hope to see you in the program. Goodbye.